Hello everyone, this is L2 and Gaming. Hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving. I certainly did, because this weekend has been a blast. Alabama wins in dramatic fashion. The Lakers didn't stink up the joint like they normally do against pretty good teams. And then the Steelers, you know, even though still not a perfect game, still not what I wanted to see from the Steelers, but hey, an ugly win is an ugly win. Steelers took care of business against a Joe Burrowless Bengals 16 to 10. Am I supposed to be happy how, how the Steelers took care of business? Not exactly. Uh, how did you feel about the defense? I ain't gonna lie, I don't like the defensive coordinator either. I'm look if you look at how the Steelers defense played throughout the whole game, I feel like the Steelers should have at least kept the Bengals at three points or something. You know, but it is what it is. Uh if the Steelers want to go far in the playoffs, their defense gotta play way better than they did. Come on man, this is this is not Joe Barrow. You you playing against Joe Browning? Like, come on now. But like I said, it is what it is. Don't like that defense coordinator, Terrell Austin. I don't like him. If I wish, in my opinion, they they need to look for a you know a more stellar defensive coordinator. But that's just my opinion. Let's move on to the offense. Offense, way better. But they got still still got a lot of work to do. Hey, Pickett was throwing it vertically. I like that. I, I like that way better than how whatever Mac Canada offense how he was running. But that's what I wanted to see from Kenny. I want Kenny to throw the ball more vertically, like stop all that outside passes, hitch. Or whatever he's still doing a little bit but it wasn't that much but hey it's good to see a receiver having over 100 yards right it's good to see that Kenny was throwing to our tight end right a little bit more I like that it was good to see our running game being more productive overall I like what I saw still got a lot of work to do but hey, at least they put some points on the board. Well, well, actually, they only put six points on the board. The other guy on the team, other player on the team, put ten points on the board. Hmm. I wonder who that is. We'll talk about him later. Let's move on to the stats. Browning, 19 out of 26 for 227 yards, one TD, one interception. Joe Mixon, eight for 16. Chase four catches for 81 yards. Is 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 the Bengals offense completely different without Joe Barrow? Am I supposed to be impressed by the defense? Like am I am I am I exactly supposed to be impressed by the Steelers? Yes or no? Like come on now. Meanwhile, Kenny Pickett, 24 for 33, 278 yards. Which quarterback had the better stats? But anyway, let's move on. Najee Harris, 15 carries for 99 yards, one TD. Now look, I was online uh, messing around on, on Twitter. I'm not gonna call it X, fuck that. But yeah, I, I was on Twitter and this guy brought up how Jaden Warren how he expects Jay Warren to get more of the touches over to Najee Harris. And I basically just tweeted like, nah, you give it to the hot running back. If Najee hot, you give it to him. If Warren hot, you give it to him. If they both hot, you give it to both. I don't know how fans can be, you know, they, they always do this like, uh, a backup running back comes into the game and does better than the starting running back. Why is that? Right? Because 
when your starting running back is in the game, more attention is on him, right? So when the backup running back comes in, basically third down, I mean third down formations, everything, of course he's going to get more, the more looks to it. They're not expecting that out of him. Anyway, I like Jalen Warren, but he got a problem with thumbing the ball, and he did it again today. So. I'm not taking nothing away from Warren, but man, like I said, give it to the hot man on the in the game. I ain't talking about what he did in the last game. In the game coming up, the actual game that they're playing now, Najee Harris was hot. You give him the ball. That's how I want the Steelers to do this shit, like. Don't, uh, but anyway, Dane Warren ended up with 13 carries for 49 yards. Okay, let's move on to the receiver. Pat, finally muted. Thank God, I, I forgot we had a tight end on the team. Nine catches for 120. George Picking, three catches for 58. I still want to see them do some kind of quick passes with uh, with Pickens. I don't, I don't understand what the problem is. With that, Deontay Johnson, four catches for 50 yards. Warren, three for 13. Hayward, two for 11. Robinson, one for 11. All right, let's move on to the defense. All right, it's TJ Watt. It's TJ Watt. I don't know what they were thinking, not having anybody uh, blocking TJ Watt on his second sack. (laughs) But hey, it is what it is. Thompson played well, made an interception. I thought he he's doing a good job in filling in for uh, Fitzpatrick. Don't you think so? Uh, Roberts six tackles, Walker five tackles, Hayward got a sack, um, Kazi five tackles, Peterson. Eh. Uh, Porter played well. Uh, I think I think he played well. Uh, Kelp, look, you ain't gonna keep Chase, you know. He's, Chase is going to still do his thing, no matter who the quarterback is. Four catches for 81 yards. I mean, how do you feel about, how do y'all feel about Jory Porter Jr. right now? Man, if the Steelers can draft another cornerback, a real good one, I'm telling you, they are going to be in pretty damn shape. But that's my opinion. Now we move on to the schedule. Still got Arizona next. Come on, buddy. If the Steelers don't win this game, I'm going to be very upset. You're at home. You're playing against Arizona. They don't want to be out in the cold. But, you know what? I better not say that. Because the Steelers might surprise me and stake up the joint. But, nevertheless, this should be this should be a win, right? Like, come on. If they don't win this game, I, I, I'm going to lose my mind. But anyway, let's move on. Alright, this is long overdue. We got to give it up for the man of the hour. The man with the power. Well, the man with the kicking power and accuracy. And that man is Chris Boswell. Like, I know. Like... Even though the offense played a little bit better, they still didn't put uh, test downs on the board. So who we had, who did the Steelers have to rely on to put some points on the board? To at least put ten of them on the board, three field goals, one extra point. Who they had to rely on to get the points on the board? Chris Boswell. Now I know there are there are. There's plenty of times where the Steelers decide not to go for it on fourth down. You know, they'll bring Chris Bowell. You get pissed off at the at Mike Tomlin for not going for it and you know all that. And, oh, I can't believe, you know, we're going to kick the field goal. But so this is what we need to do as Steelers fans. When Boswell kicks the field goal, makes the field goal, we all need to say, 
thank you Boswell every time even if you get pissed off that the still didn't score a touchdown gotta go kick the field goal thank you Chris Boswell that's what we need to start doing now I mean now I know there's this kicker in Baltimore, play for the Ravens. I can't remember his name. Uh, uh, Justin uh, Taker. Uh, I don't even remember his name. But hey, look, I know he's a great kicker and all. He's probably gonna go to the Hall of Fame. But Chris Bywell, you are you are our Hall of Famer, hands down. You're even better than Justin Tucker. Yeah, I said it. So everybody, whenever Chris Baldwell makes the field goal, thank you, Boswell. That what you need to say. Even if you're pissed off that they didn't get the didn't get the uh, the the, uh, the touchdown, the offense, or they stake at the joy. Baldwell come in making the field goal. He makes it. You should say thank you, Boswell. And thank you all for uh, checking out this video. If you like, give me a like and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Man, thank you, Chris Boswell. You're the greatest.